So every car comes with sort of a level one charger. So a level one is a will plug into like a normal outlet, sort of the kind of the way your your phone comes with a charger that plugs in and you can charge your phone. As an example, the Tesla comes with a kit that looks uh, like this. So every car's got some kind of uh, level one charger. So if you unzip this, hopefully, you're gonna see there's a, a charger in here and there's a plug that can, an adapter with a plug that can plug into a normal household outlet. This one also has an adapter for 220 if you happen to put in a 220 volt outlet and it's got an adapter for different kinds of chargers. I'll, I'll explain this in a minute. So that comes with every car, that's level one. Uh, this is, this is uh, six kilometers an hour, so that's not a lot of uh, speed. That's pretty slow, but uh, if you're stuck somewhere or you're staying at your brother-in-law's over the weekend or whatever the case is, or my brother's or my sister-in-law, however that works out, then this is a handy thing to have. And as I say, you don't have to buy it separately. Uh, every car comes, they may not look like this, but they'll come with some kind of level one charger. So what's happening in most cases, most people are wanting um, a level two. They're wanting a, a 220 volt charger, a bit more room, a bit more speed in terms of, uh, of charging ability. So that, that there's a, as I said, there's a variety of manufacturers. Um, Tesla makes one specific for their car. And uh, all the other manufacturers have a, have a configuration called um, J1772. That's this configuration here. So when the car manufacturers started to make electric cars, they, with the exception of Tesla, who was already making electric cars, agreed that everybody would have the same plug. So this 1772 plug on most level two chargers, again, with the exception of the Tesla, you'll find that uh, this fits in. I, I have to thank my friends at uh, Plug and Drive for uh, Ron Groves over at Plug and Drive for lending me this unit. So this happens to be one made by Schnarder. The, I brought another one with me as well. This is, um, EV duty charger. This charger is made uh, actually in Canada, uh, quite a reasonably priced charger. In this particular case, the charger's got a, a cord on it. I could put a receptacle and plug this charger in, but it can be hardwired as well, and that's got a 1772 cord. So uh, I only brought a couple, but to give you an idea that there's really a plethora. These are very basic chargers. They, they don't have communication. Uh, they, they're not internet connected. This is a typical of somebody, what somebody will buy. These chargers can go, uh, almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all of them can go inside or outside. This charger is weatherproof. It can go outside, it's all riveted together. There's actually nothing here that opens up. So that, that gives you an idea of that. Now we talked about level three chargers. I don't have a level three charger here because a level three, most of those level three chargers are about $50,000 and they're giant boxes that sit by the uh, side of the road. Uh, and can be used for uh, charging much more quickly. Uh, this is where we're talking about being on a trip and, and um, you know, moving along needing to charge a, a bit more quickly, whether that's the Tesla supercharger or the Viridian microgrid that we did uh, in Pickering. There's a supercharger there along with level two chargers. So the shot of the, um, the supercharger off to the left, the two chargers off to the right, and in that case it had a solar uh, carport as well, just to, uh, to provide a bit of protection for the cars and to demonstrate the uh, solar ability, everything, the solar, the solar that's on the carport is feeding into the power walls inside. It, the idea, it's a microgrid, it's everything, there's even a bit of uh, uh, wind there as well. So you know, that's what you would normally see on the highway. This is the way a car works, that you come home, plug it in, take it in the morning, the battery's full, hopefully that's gonna manage for all your day's needs. That is what we're in installing, which is a level two charger. A level two charger, um, anywhere from uh, 30 something amps up to about 80 amps, but at 220 volts, it's, we're putting in a dedicated circuit and you'll see that on, on the outside. Most owners have that in the, mine is outside. They could be outside or they're in the garage where the car is parked. You plug it in and you're getting a much faster charge. And this is, most people are using that. They, they come in all different sizes. There's several different manufacturers. Uh, some of them are very basic. They just charge. Other ones will talk to each other. You can, uh, uh, to communicate, some of them will share the load. So if it, when in my house, when I get my second car, I won't put a separate feed and I'll use the same feed that we put in. I'll link the two chargers together. Tesla's can, can do that and they will uh, dynamically uh, share the charge between the two cars. They'll actually look in and see which car needs more of a charge 
charge that car a bit more to try overnight if it can with the same feed because the reality is in most residences you you don't have enough ampacity to put in two separate feeds even if you wanted to another thing to sort of mention is the cords so uh, these these units can come with different lengths of cord it's very common to find a 23 or 25 foot cord that gives you a bit of flexibility you don't want the cord to first of all there's a limit legally for how long the cord can be plus you don't want the cord to be too long because it just makes a mess it's all over the place you've got to pick it up out of the snow and what have you that's not the game plan um, but even with the Tesla it's available with the 23 or an 8 foot cord sometimes the car only parks just where it parks and 8 foot is plenty of cord and so every once in a while we'll install those. Uh, the longer cord gives you a bit more flexibility, but it's a bit more cord to handle. When I go to a house, the first one thing I want to know is, show me where you're going to park the car. Well, I'm not sure. No, tell me where you're sure, because I want to know where the charging port is. I want to know what's going to make sense. Where's the flow going to be? Am I going to approach the car from here, unplug it and head into the door, or am I going to have to trip over that cord when I go in? I'm going to have to live with this for a long time. So if I can make it convenient for the customer, They'll enjoy the car, they'll enjoy the charging, and they'll enjoy everything a lot more. So it's very important. Sometimes I'll say, you know what? An eight-foot cord is going to be perfect for you. You, just, it, you haven't got a lot of room on the wall. There's not a lot of clearance. Somebody who's familiar with this, a lot of times I get this question, can, can anybody, can my electrician uh, hook this up for me? Well, the truth of it is it's not extremely complex, but there's a lot of nuances to know, particularly with the Tesla chargers in terms of the settings. This is one of the things that we do very well. And uh, again, I, I, a lot of the questions we get are not necessarily about the charger. How is it going to work in the car? Uh, how can I manage my time of use rates? Where is, that, where is that done? How much is it going to cost me to charge? These are the kind of questions you get. In Toronto, the, the rate of electricity it drops at 7 o'clock at night. So I can set my car here, and pretty much every car can do that. Uh, to start charging at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Again, there was all this worry about how long it's going to take. I'm not worried. If it starts at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, it takes 3, 4, 5 hours to charge. I'm not worried. I'll have plenty of charge in the morning. It's not an issue. I'd rather have it at a, a, a lower rate uh, and not charge at the, uh, the high rate. This is a 1772. This is a Tesla charger. These are not uh, a match. These are not the same. This is pretty much every car except Tesla will accept this 1772. This fits into the charging port over here on the car. Lights up, push it in, and push the button and you can release it. What Tesla's done is provided this adapter. So if I want to use this, I can plug, if I do it properly, I can plug this into here and then plug that into my Tesla so that I can make use of this. Getting back to what we were talking about before is uh, the level three chargers. This is what the uh, EVCO program that the Ontario government is using to try to get in place. And the, the purpose of this is it's all well and good. 300, 350 kilometers, I'm good around the city. There's no problem. But my brother lives in Ottawa. I want to go visit him every once in a while. And I, this is my car. I want to take my car with me. Well, clearly 350 kilometers, that might make it to my brother's, but it's going to be, uh, I'm gonna, I don't want to gently roll into his driveway with two kilometers left. I need to be a little more confident. Uh, luckily, I have a Tesla. Tesla uh, decided when they um, went to design the cars that they needed this supercharger network. That they couldn't, you couldn't do it. If you couldn't get the car past the city, they were never going to get the adoption that they needed. And they didn't think other people were going to put the chargers in for them. And they thought that the people that did put the chargers in for them weren't going to put them in the locations they thought that they needed. If so they decided that that would be all in fact, part and parcel of the cost of the car, the part of the, what I paid for, and I can use those superchargers. So when I go to Ottawa, as an example, I'll stop in Kingston. There's a supercharger in, a set of superchargers in Kingston, and the superchargers are placed near hotels, near restaurants, near shopping, and what have you, because typically what's going to happen, exactly what we're talking about, I'm going to stop for a half an hour, and the car charges. This is a completely different thing than what's happening at uh, my home. The, there's a charger in the car that accepts the voltage and converts it to DC to charge my car. In this case, the charger actually puts out DC and it's direct to the battery and extremely fast. So within most of the charging happens within the first half an hour. And I'm typically, I'm a, I like to just, I'm there already. I'd like to have it topped right up to the top. I'll usually stay about 45 minutes. My, my wife and I will usually have a, a 
a bite to eat, a cup of coffee, and, uh, and that's all that's needed. And, and when I arrive in Ottawa, I've still got a, a good 150 kilometers of range, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned. And I'll find some, if I can't find a supercharger in Ottawa, I'll find a level two charger or plug into the house, and I seem to manage, and then I'm doing this, sort of the same thing on the way back. These superchargers, at least for the Tesla ones, they're all part of the system. So if I decided to set a trip for, to, into my computer in the car that I wanted to go to, say, to Palo Alto, it will actually design a trip for me, decide what the consumption is going to be, and set me through these superchargers so that I can make it really at no, at no additional cost. Well, you, you pay nothing extra at the moment. And when you plug this into the car, the car takes a moment and is able to communicate with the charging unit, whether it was a level uh, one, level two, or level three. It knows what the amperage is of the unit, how it's set with the dip switches, whether it's a D straight DC to DC, whether it's 120 AC, it, it couples up in, uh, with the car so that it's charging at the right rate. So there's, it's not just a straight plug-in, there's a communication in there that's happening as well. As the adoption of EVs uh, come, and there's more EVs on the road, the idea of dispensing electricity, just like dispensing gasoline, will be a business for people. People will set it up and it won't need the input of the government to have to push it along. It'll, it'll have a, a, a momentum of its own. As cars like the, the Chevy Bolt and the Model 3 roll out and we, we're seeing a real uh, increase in the number of vehicles, we want to be able to, to handle that and, and to be able to provide a satisfactory uh, level of service. If you're interested and you need to know more about electric vehicle charging, um, if, you've, if you've got questions, if you think that we could be of some value, uh, give us a call. We're in the Greater Toronto Area. You can reach us by phone if you like, 416-490-8093, or take a look at the website. I'd say pretty much everybody I speak to has at some point checked in on our website, and we have all kinds of other interesting stuff there as well. So that's uh, signatureelectric.ca.